If you're doing woodworking, I bet a lot of people are asking you to make them picture frames. And one of the challenges with picture frames is getting the miters exactly right. So I'm going to give you a shortcut to making a really nice picture frame. It's a no miter picture frame. We've got a butt joint here on the corners. Everything is actually held together with pocket screws. I'm going to take you through the whole process of making one of these, starting with ripping our material to size. I'm going to end up with two and a half inch wide rails and styles. So I'm setting my fence just a little bit over that because we want to have room to come back and joint the sawn edges so that we have really nice clean edges. Working with cherry and on my cherry I'm starting with an edge I've already jointed. If that jointing thing is confusing you, don't sweat it because we're going to talk more about that in just a second. So at this stage of the game my parts are too long. I'm ready to rip them to width plus a little bit. Alright, now I was talking about jointing. What's the deal with that? Well, the deal with jointing is it's a process that gives us a nice clean edge. We're going to use that to take the saw marks off. Additionally, it makes the edge nice and straight. And that's a really important step in woodworking. We want to start with straight edges if we want to produce straight material. So we're going to do a little transition here. Where this gets us is one of the ways that we can do jointing is right here on a router table. Let's have a look at the cutter that I've got already in the router. This is a flush trim bit and currently unplugged so we can talk about it some more and get close to it here. A flush trim bit, we've got a cutter exactly the same diameter as the ball bearing here. So the benefit this will give me in just a second is alignment. In order to do jointing on a router table, we have to be able to offset the fence. So I'm going to put shims on the outfeed side of my fence. And what that's doing is pushing the fence out just a little bit. And then, next step is alignment that I just talked about. What we want is the face of the outfeed fence even with the ball bearing. And just get it close at this point. I'm going to lock one end and then I'm going to micro adjust the fence. So the way I'm going to do my micro adjust is by starting too far back. And then bring the fence forward in tiny increments until it looks okay. And then at the end of the day, what's really going to tell us if we have this right or not will be our first cut. For our test cut, we had one extra piece, so we'll try that.
What we're looking for on that test cut is one of three things. Either it cuts really well, like this one just did, or as I'm making the cut, maybe it butts into that outfeed fence. That tells us we're not taking enough material off. Or as I get past the bit, it snipes. It kind of falls into the cutter. That tells you you're taking too much material off. Then you can go on and micro adjust your fence until you get it in just the right spot. This is a great setup where we are. So I'm going to help myself a little bit here by adding some feather boards to the equation because we want our material to stay snug against the fence. And then we're ready to join our edges. Next step for me, I'm going to cut my parts to finish length, get the screw pockets in them, then we can come back and have a look at assembling our no miter picture frame. To put our no miter picture frame together, it's easiest to do this on a bench. And further, what we want to do is securely hold these pieces down. One of the things with screw pockets is that if you don't clamp the parts down to a table while you're putting them together, they can climb while you're driving the screw, and we don't want that to happen. The wax paper is here so that if I get squeeze out, it's not going onto my workbench. And once I get some clamp pressure on here, a little bit of clamp pressure, I'm feeling across the outside, make sure the long grain and end grain of my parts are aligned. All right, next step, let that glue dry. Run a random, over, a random orbit sander over the whole frame so that if you do have any little irregularities, the random orbit sander will knock that right out. Then we're going to come back to the router table again to produce the rabbit that we need on the inside and a nice profile on the outside. Let's talk about that rabbit for a second. When you locate your screw pockets on the back of these frame pieces, Make sure that you're moving them in enough that you're going to miss the edge of the rabbit. We're going to run a router bit inside here, and the last thing we want is for the router bit to hit the screw. I'm running a quarter inch rabbit, so the screw pocket has to be more than a quarter inch that way to make sure we don't run into that screw. That takes care of that, and we're going to be ready for some routing. <laughs>
Now we're uh, rabbit hunting here at the router table. What we need to do is get a rabbit in the back of our picture frame to receive the picture. This is going to be best done in a couple of passes. I'm going, as I said earlier, a quarter inch wide on the rabbit. I want to end up three eighths of an inch deep. So I've controlling the quarter inch wide with the ball bearing on the cutter, the depth of the cut we control with the router itself. So pass number one is done. Come up for pass number two. Now, when you do this, we're working in space here in the middle of the router table. It's the only way that we can do this kind of rabbiting. Make sure that you're feeding in the correct direction. We want to go against the rotation of the cutter. So cutting on that side of the cutter as I am, I'm feeding this way, this way, this way, all the way around. That is looking great. Now let's talk about that rabbit. Currently it looks like this. We really want it to end up looking like this. Easiest way to do this is just with a hand chisel. After your work is done at the router table, come back with a chisel and you can cut these corners out to square them off so that your glass or plexiglass and picture will drop right in there. I'm going to do a bit change here and get the fence back on so we can add a profile on the outside of our frame to dress it up a little bit. You can use any cutter you want to use on the outside of this. I'm using a half inch round over bit and I'm raising it enough that the shoulder of the cutter is going to come up into the face of my material, give it that little detail on the front. So I'm going to do one more pass. Now I want to talk about sequence of passes here. We want to cut in this direction first. This direction being we have end grain, long grain, and end grain. You always want to route end grain before you do the adjacent long grain. The reason for that is as we come along this way, if we get a little chip over here, that's okay, because this cut will take care of it, it'll get rid of it. So that edge first. sanding, a little finish. Our frame is in great shape here. Before we end this, let's talk a little bit about math so you can figure out how to dimension this for yourself. We've got two pieces here. We've got parts that butt into other parts. So looking at the inside of this, first thing you're going to have to do is figure out how big your rabbit's going to be. We need to know that number. I'm dimensioning this frame for an 8 by 10 image. Quarter inch rabbit, quarter inch rabbit. So if this is 10, this piece has to be nine and a half because then we go a quarter inch more into this piece and a quarter inch more into this piece. That's fairly straightforward. Now let's look at it this way. Same size rabbits. If this is eight inches from here to here, then it's seven and a half inside we're going to take that number and add it to the width of two frame pieces to get the overall length of this piece. A little bit of math to do in order to calculate your frame size parts, frame part sizes, but it's not too bad. The other thing I would do then on the frame is in order to hang it on the wall, on this one, 
All I did is drill a hole in that top piece. That'll receive a nail so that can hang up. That takes care of our no miter picture frame. Table saw work, router table work, workbench work to put it together. And when we're done, we've got a great looking frame that we didn't have to do any miters on. Mm -hmm.